Um, okay, so when we look at the actual semi-major axis of different asteroids and the numbers of asteroids at those distances, then we see there are some interesting kind of, you know, clumps of asteroids, right? And there's gaps between those clumps. So here, this blue clump says, you know, there's quite a few asteroids between 2.1 and 2.5 AU. And then there's a little bit of a gap where there's not very many asteroids. And then again, from 2.5 to 2.8, there's another clump and then another gap and then on and on. And so these gaps are called Kirkwood gaps. This is not in your textbook. I just find this really interesting. And it goes back to our discussion of Jupiter's or Saturn's moons and the rings. Uh, these are the gaps that are um, in orbital resonances with Jupiter. So there's you know, various different resonance. It has to be um, an integer number of orbits for the asteroid period equals an integer number for Jupiter's. And so some of the resonances are three to one, a five to two, seven to three, two to one. So there's lots of different orbital resonances and uh, that serves to clear those asteroids out of those um, orbital locations leading to these gaps. So uh, kind of a, just a cool way how Jupiter shapes the asteroid belt in the same way that Saturn's moons shape the rings of Saturn. Okay. Um, something else that's interesting about these kind of, you know, clumps of asteroids is they um, tend to be similar in composition. So we saw earlier that our S-class asteroids are more common closer to the sun and our C-class asteroids are more common far from the sun. Um, and we call these asteroid families. So they have a similar uh, semi-major axis, right, similar orbital location. They tend to have a similar inclination, either in plane with the rest of the solar system or out of plane. And they tend to have similar eccentricities as well. So based on that information, what do you suppose is true about asteroid families? And B is correct. So asteroid families, uh, because they have all of the same orbital characteristics and they have similar compositions, um, they probably came from the same parent object. So these are, you know, the bits and pieces of some planetesimal that got smashed. So I find this extremely fascinating uh, that you group asteroids into these families and they have similar histories. And we can know something about those histories based on the characteristics of these asteroid families. Um, okay. So they kind of help us to piece together the history of what happened in the asteroid belt. Um, this graph isn't important to think about too much, except to say that these, you can kind of see if you plot the orbital distance versus their inclination, you can kind of see how they kind of clump together into dense chunks. So each one of these pixels is an asteroid and these little clumps are our asteroid families. So they're kind of hard to find. You have to, first of all, find the asteroid, track its orbit very carefully, um, organize it into a graph like this. And then generally you use machine learning techniques to find those clumps because they're kind of hard to pick out otherwise. Um, so uh, rather complicated, but once you've done it, then you can look at all the orbital characteristics of that asteroid and help to tell a story about their history.